It is now my honor to introduce Maddie Sisson, who will sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave we will never never forget your service and we will always conduct ourselves in a way that brings honor to this community and honor to the name of the men and women who have literally given their lives in service. I thank you for the honor of being here today and having the opportunity to emcee this event. We moved here in 65 and in 1967, Eddie Wright asked me if I'd join the fire department. I've lived one mile east of Middleburg on the little family farm since for the, all my life. And I decided to apply to, for membership in the Middleburg Fire Department in 1960. I was elected to the fire company and almost immediately they, invoked, they voted me to be secretary. And I said, well, no, I just got here. Let me get my feet wet first. So I was secretary for 12, 10 years and then vice president a couple of years. So I had 15 years, 1960 to 1975. I became involved uh, because I lived downtown over Middleburg Real Estate office across from the coach stop and I could see the fire trucks and responding to calls and I knew a lot of the people that were a fireman and so I just asked how to join and man I was working with, Ed Wright, uh, presented my name as a member. And they, uh, I was nominated and approved, and so I became a fireman. I joined it in sometime in either 52 or 53. Back when I joined it, uh, all the business in town either were in, involved with the fire department of the members, so it, it was a real community and loving event. I also had a son and a daughter in the company. My daughter was the first female firefighter in the county. So at one time I had three generations in Loudoun County Fire. As of now, all of us are basically inactive. Uh, in the fire world, people would know me more as Donna Swain. My dad is Edward Snooks Swain, and my brother's Tommy Swain. My mom is Thelma Swain, and we um, had quite a family legacy in the fire department. My dad was the chief for many years, and my brother Tommy was the chief for many years. I joined probably in about 1979, 78, we think that I was the first woman firefighter, but definitely the first in Middleburg Fire Department. Well, I joined in 1956, uh, either June or July of 56. Ed Swain, which is better known as Snooks, asked me to join, and I just thought it was something I liked to do. I was a charter member of the Ladies' Auxiliary, my husband's in the fire department, 
and has been for years. My father and uncle were charter members of that day, 1936. And it's interesting to see the all the things that they have out there with the names on them and the minutes of the meetings and old pictures and stuff. It just brings back so many memories. I got involved in the rescue and fire department in 1975 and moved in 1990. My son, Michael Swartz, was a member before me. My son is the reason I got involved and we had a relay of who would be the best and I always made it better in test marks than he did. I was a police officer in 1970 to 74 for the town of Middleburg and then went to the Sheriff's Department from 74 till 89. At that time I became Chief of Middleburg and worked there till 97. But uh, had a lot of interaction during those years with the Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, became very good friends with most of the community and embraced it as my own actually. And most of the guys in the fire department and their families are close friends of mine to this day. I became involved, involved with the Middleburg Volunteer Fire Department through um, visits that I had in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s um, to Middleburg. My sister lived here and uh, she had some friends and you've probably heard about them before, uh, Carol and Francis Bowershock and they were very involved in rescue. And as I um, spent nights at people's houses while I was visiting, uh, these tones would go off and everybody would jump up and run out of the room. <laughs> and they talked about it, the work that they did. They were EMTs, not firefighters, um, and, and medics. Um, the work that they did just completely involved their lives, even though they were working at the, as regular jobs at the same time. A few years later, in 1990, I ended up moving to Middleburg, and I joined the fire department right away. I started out driving, as many do, uh, while I was in EMT class, and it was a fantastic experience. I, I will tell you that I, I drove for about nine months. That's about how long it took to get through the EMT program and get the certification. You just never knew what you were going to run into, and uh you do so many of them, then you sort of, I guess it's like an undertaker, you know, you know what you gotta do when you go out there, you never know what you're gonna face. One time in particular, we were working a field fire in Philemont, and um, forgive me, I can't remember the fireman's name, but he lost his life there. And it was a brush fire, and I remember, um, my dad and my brother were both on the call, and it was, sorry, it was, um, brush fires were always hard for me because you can't wear apparatus in them. You just are, um, you know, carrying water and maybe a rake, and but you don't wear a lot of apparatus other than your um, coat and boots. So you're not wearing oxygen, and I always had a hard time, and I hated that I had a hard time, and my brother always gave me a hard time about having a hard time. So we're on this call, and all of a sudden, somebody yelled, man down, man down, and I was right near this, you know, just a few steps away. I turned around, and I ran over there, and all I could see was a gray-haired older man face down. I thought it was my dad. And I remember just being frozen, and trying to turn him over, and it was as if it took forever to turn him over. And um, right as I got him turned over and saw his face, my dad came along and bumped me out of the way and started CPR. And it was just like I was so relieved that my dad was okay, but very, very sad. And, and I ended up at that point, I think I was a shock trauma tech, so I was a little more qualified than... Um, my dad and I took over the call and we did lose him. So that was hard. So there were lots of hard calls, but uh, through the years, it's always just been so much fun. I had a pothouse one cold winter's night and Clayton Ellis was the truck driver at that time. And at that time, we didn't have any inside cab coverage for firemen. We rode on the back, held onto the bar and hope we got to the fire. And uh, 
It was cold. I can remember that, and it was, it was midnight or after. And when we arrived at the fire, it was an old, uh, it was a barn area with uh, trucks in it that had just gotten back from hauling hay, and the hay touched the muffler, caught on fire, and everything was in flames when we got there, and it felt so good. It was cold, and that fire felt so good, and you could you could see the change in the firemen as the uh, fire was put out. We suddenly became ice balls from the water and stuff uh, sticking to our coats. I had a lot of happy days. We uh, we were like a big family. Uh, we had a lot of good times. The story is we had come back from a run. We had been on a call, and I don't remember what the call was. But Clayton was driving her officer or something, and I gave Clayton a bunch of lip. I, I was being smart with him. I was young, 18 or <laughs> so, 19. He still gives you a bunch of lip. <laughs> and I was taking my gear off, took my jacket off, took my helmet off, and when I went to take my bunker pants off. I bent down, and when I bent down, Clayton walked up behind me and booted me and just kicked me right through the gear rack, and I just tumbled right <laughs> over on the floor. Clayton never said a word. He just walked off. <laughs> You know, I still think about that. I laugh so hard. It just, it was, back then, it was, it was, you didn't disrespect your elders. You disrespected your elders. They took care of it right there. This lady would park her Mercedes in front of the old firehouse, which would block the entrance. And she'd get parking tickets all the time, and she didn't care. And one day there was a fire. We couldn't find her to move the car. And the police car would park up on the corner. I turned around and looked, and someone had the Seagraves fire truck, and they pushed the Mercedes sideways across the street out of the front of the firehouse. And it was going across the road like that. Now, I don't know who's driving the fire truck and I'll never own up to who was. <laughs> but <laughs> and she would just had a fit when I gave her a ticket for parking her car in front of the firehouse, <laughs> which was against the law. One of the funny things about um, the way I got going with this was uh, that the bower socks, and you heard a lot about the bower socks, you may have heard them uh, referred to as the twins, they were identical twins, and I mean identical, um, and they were both paramedics or medics. So they, when they went on a call um, and took care of a patient um, who was perhaps unconscious, and that person came to in the back of the ambulance, they would have these two sisters sitting on either side of them. And it wasn't necessarily a good experience for the patient at that point to think that they were seeing double. Anyway, another call uh, I can remember was Cliff Jennings. I don't believe he's here today. But we went on a call to Willisville and we took a lady to a hospital in Winchester. She was going to have a baby. And uh, it ended up that she was born, the baby was born in the hallway going through the hospital. And the funny thing about this is, uh, a couple years, uh, about two years later, I guess, uh, Cliff and I had another call to go to Willisville. And while we're up there, uh, the, the girl who was the mother of the baby that, that was born two years ago said, Cliff, she says, I want you to come and see the baby. She says, <laughs> she called him your baby. She says, uh, we named him after you. We named him Cliff. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny too. There was a very bad wreck. And um, a young woman had driven off the road. The car had flipped several times and gone down into a ditch. It was kind of mostly upside down. She was trapped inside. She was bleeding badly. Um, and when the call went out, people came from all different directions. The ambulance came, of course, and the fire truck and this, what's called the squad truck came too. The squad truck um, is there to stabilize the car because you can't just jump in and, and, and grab somebody out. You, you, you get, the car could turn over further. So they were down there with what they call uh, cribbing, um, four by four cribbing um, that they put around the car to make sure that it, it doesn't move while they're trying to cut this person out. Um, meanwhile, the EMTs are down there and, and they are, you know, desperately trying to control breathing, a bleeding on this patient. So <laughs> that was all going on. And Volunteers are still arriving to the scene. What can I do? What can I help with? And Karen arrives and, and she calls down and she says into the ditch and she said, okay, I'm here. What do you need? And somebody yells up four by fours. And so four by fours were gauze pads. 
Unfortunately, four by fours are also cribbing. So she goes and she gets, of course, she's an EMT. She goes to the ambulance and gets this thing of uh, these packages of, of gauze pads and starts throwing them down. And the firefighters are looking up going, what the, we need cribbing, you know? <laughs> so for the banquet, the banquets were always fun. I don't know if anybody talked about banquets. But every year you have a banquet. For the banquet, the, the fireside took a piece of cribbing, a four by four piece of cribbing, painted it gold and gave it to her as her particular prize for getting confused about what kind of four, and four by four was needed. So anyway, the, the girl survived. Of course, in 72, we had Hurricane Agnes and Middleburg became an island. You couldn't go any direction. It was all underwater. So fire and rescue guys, they stayed here around the clock, took care of people. And then later on in 72, we had a freak Thanksgiving snowstorm. And the whole town was snowed in. Route 50 was blocked from Paris Mountain to Gilbert's Corner. The firemen went out. The, all these volunteer guys would walk down through the, the roads, snowbound, to check on people to make sure they were okay in their cars. And if people would run out of gas, they would bring them back, and the people in town would take them into their houses and give them dinner and give them a place to sleep. And I was staying in a house here in town, which is on the corner of Madison and Route 50, and it was John Tauber's house. And they were in Florida, and I would stay there for them. And I called him up and said, you know, what was going on? And he said, sure, you can take people in. So I bought in two families with children to stay in the house because I worked all night, too because I was the only policeman there. Um, got through the next, I worked all through the night, got through about two o'clock the next day. They finally got the road cleared away, got the snow plows through. I walked into the house. They had gone to the store and bought a Thanksgiving dinner. And all these people I'd never seen before in my life were waiting for me with their children. And when I came in, we all had Thanksgiving dinner together. Pretty nice. So, but it was a good town. Their, far, their volunteer fire department, a great bunch of people you'll never replace them, so. I was always really happy that Eddie Wright asked me to join the fire department. And uh, I really got to know a lot of people, not only in town or in the fire department, but actually around the community uh, because we, they really depend, depended on you and, and it, was, it was a lot of fun and, and to be able to help the people. It was a lot of work, but uh, you worked together and it was a lot of fun, uh, of course, Around here, everybody knows everybody, knew everybody. Well, just to thank everybody over the years that has donated and helped out. When, when we moved up here, we had a house far out in the country, and the uh, people working for the owner wanted to know what the owner could do for us to, uh, as a donation. And, we told them we owed, I think it was somewhere around $36,000 left on the building, so they wrote us a check for almost $36,000 to make us clear. Oh, we were all friends. We've talked about Snooks today, and Reggie Dawson was just in here. Eddie Moore, I'm sorry he didn't attend this gathering today because he was in a long, long time. And I look back at <coughs> this pamphlet was given us today, The when the fire company was organized in 1936, <coughs> the uh, first president was J. Dabney Simpson, and he was seems like president of almost everything here in Middleburg from time to time. And there's a school in Leesburg named after his brother, J. Lupton Simpson, so quite a person. I'm glad I was able to contribute a little bit to the fire department. Been here a long time and they've, they've done a great job building this building and all the trucks and ambulances that they have, so. Uh, I, I will just say that I, I do miss it. I was um, an EMT and a paramedic uh, for a total of 23 years um, with the Middleburg Volunteer Fire Department. And I was proud of that, proud of that time and, and uh, I think I did a lot of good, and I had a lot of good done for me. So, thank you. Even today, during this um, recognition ceremony, 
I kept sitting there thinking, I wonder if I could go back. I wonder if I could go back. And then it dawned on me that today was really the turnover of it not being volunteer anymore. So um, I will keep my memories and go forward. And um, it was just a privilege and a pleasure to always be part of the community. And um, it's how we were raised. We were raised to pay it forward and to look out for our community. And I, um, it's just there's nothing better to instill in our children, I think, than to pay it forward.